tomorrow we're heading to the Westman Islands, which aren't that far away from Reykjavik itself. Unfortunately, it will be a tender port and it's meant to be quite a tricky one. So fingers crossed we can get off. Well, good morning. As you can see, we haven't docked at the Westman Islands. This morning at seven o'clock, the captain came over the intercom and said, because of the weather and the sea states, we can't dock. We're going straight to Belfast. Bit of a shame because that was the last chance for us to see whales or puffins really. And we haven't seen any of the wildlife so far. So we've got an extra sea day as we slowly sail down to Belfast. And the ship is rocking today. It doesn't look that bad. And because we've got an extra sea day, it's going quite slow. So that is making the ship rock a bit as well. Anyway, we'll see you in Belfast in a couple of days time. Will the weather improve? <laughs> it's drizzling now, I think of it. <laughs> see you in Belfast. Well, hello and welcome as we pull in to a slightly overcast Belfast, Northern Ireland. So after two days at sea, we're finally getting off. In the grounds of City Hall. Okay, great. You, uh, World War Memorials and statues and stuff. And you can go into the City Hall and have a look around inside. It's a grand old building. We've just been dropped off in the centre of Belfast, haven't we? Yes, yeah. GFL taxi driver? Very good. It was £15 in a taxi from the port. Yeah, right outside the ship. What we could do after this, we can walk up to the City Hall. And the taxi driver said, as you walk up it, there's... Uh, Memorials to all the all the ships on the White Star Line okay, that were yeah, built yeah. in Belfast, with the Titanic being the last one in front of City Hall. So I don't know if that's true. We can find out. I'm sure, we'll see be. if we can find it. You know, Royal Avenue, I think he said it was on. Okay. So um, we'll get back to you in that as we do it. By the way, in front of the cathedral, this area is called Writer's Square. In 1776 that newsletters, enterprise and publishers intercepted the American Declaration of Independence on its way from Philadelphia to London and printed its contents before it reached King and Parliament. So now we're on Royal Avenue. If we head up here, this is where they have those memorials to the ships built by the White Star Line. I don't know if we can see any. So these sculptures along the Royal Avenue, these big things behind me, can you see those? So we've got here the Celtic, Nomadic, Laurentic. Never heard of that one, have you? Laurentic. The Britannic. There's another one there. Oceanic. So I just counted the sculptures along Royal Avenue and I counted eight. And the last two I can see the Olympic and the one behind the trees must be the Titanic. So there's the final one, the Titanic, the White Star ships built in Belfast. And at the end of the street is Belfast City Hall, built in 1906. So we're gonna head down to the Titanic Museum. There's about 30 minutes walk from City Hall. 
So the hoods are up again. Welcome to sunny Belfast. In the tropics of Northern Ireland. It's not cold. It's not cold, actually. It is about, about <laughs> 17 degrees, isn't it? But it's just this drizzle that spotted us around. <laughs> <laughs> We have, we have enjoyed the trip, right? But I think after the long winter we've had, maybe Caribbean. <laughs> Caribbean. <laughs> Over there, you can see Summerfest Belfast in the rain. Are they being ironic with that title? I think so. It's quite funny how one of the biggest disasters in maritime history has become such a big tourist attraction. <laughs> Mel's excited. Do you think you're going to bump into Jamie Dornan? I don't think so. But I'd be very excited if I did. He's from Northern Ireland. Like Do you think he walks around he's Belfast nice. all day looking for autographs to sign? Yeah, he's nice. He's got a sense of humour too. He's, he's richer than you. He's younger than you. He's more famous than you. But he's not me, is he? That's a plus <laughs> point, isn't it? <laughs> So as we walk along the quayside towards the Titanic experience, do you think we're going to have a day of sun before no. we go home? No. Akurari was the only day, wasn't it? It was a nice day in Akurari. So we're now approaching the Titanic experience. You can see that strange building. So just before we get to the Titanic Museum, we stopped in a little cafe by the harbour called the, the Dock Cafe. Is that what it's called? Yeah. And it, uh, we've never had this, this experience before. It's a community cafe and it's, you pay what you think it's worth. It's worth yeah. It's like um, it's a charity thing. You, like, now we to pay, so now you don't pay. You, you tap the, you can scan the, the thing yeah. oh, and, or a put box. a donation box and put in what you think they deserve or what you think what you can afford and the big thing is it's really good coffee as well and it's really nice yeah, yeah. but the thing is now I feel really guilty you don't know what to put in now do <laughs> yeah. you it's like ooh I can tell you one thing if this opened back home they'd be bankrupt within a week <laughs> <laughs> so it's one o'clock and we've booked tickets for the Titanic Museum there you look heaven at the back, you love it. It spells out the word Titanic. Titania rules the waves. I hear Cunard is faster now. It's a matter of speed, James. Not for Mr. Ismay's passenger. James, you always do a bit of time on their hands. Oh, we'll have none of that talk here. So we had a look around the Titanic Museum. Yeah, it was good, wasn't it? Good, yeah. I couldn't really film inside, it was quite dark. There's a lot of information to take in. By the way, it's, it's about the construction pieces. and the stories behind the Titanic. Mm -hmm. If you're thinking it's going to be uh, relics from the Titanic, yeah. isn't, this isn't the place for you. No, I mean, uh, there's one or two, but this isn't that Yeah, many. what they have got are letters and things from people. It's about basically the story of the shipyard and the people on board and just basically the history of that time. It was £25, wasn't it? Yeah, but it's definitely worth coming. But it's definitely worth doing. At least a couple of hours, if not longer. If you read, yeah. if you read everything, it'll be oh. hours in there. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of reading. Mm. But there is a couple of bits that are more, like, interactive, I would say. Mm. A little ride. A little ride, a little ride in a there ride. on the gantry. Not the most exciting, but interesting. Yeah. Interesting way of showing the information. Yes, yeah. Anyway, we're outside now, and this is where the Titanic was actually built. Yeah. They had a good gift shop as well. 
and I like yeah. the fridge magnets, but I thought it might be tempting fate to buy yeah, a Titanic Yeah, Mel, Mel also magnet. didn't want to buy a, a Titanic fridge magnet. Four pound fifty. Especially when we're getting back, back on, on board the ship. The ship yeah. <laughs> I call me superstitious. <laughs> And our ship is docked a couple of miles away, isn't it, Mark? Oh, yes, yes, yes. You can just see the funnel over there. Also along this stretch of quay, they've got a series of Game of Thrones uh, stained glass windows, haven't they? Yeah. Because a lot of that was filmed around this area in Belfast and Northern <laughs> Ireland. And um, there's one by the Titanic Museum. <clears throat> Unfortunately, there's a big bunch of tourists there at the moment. What, what <laughs> everyone else is a tourist, have you noticed? Ev everyone else is a tourist, but we're not. Well, that was Belfast. It's about 20 past three now. I think we'll head back to the ship. I don't know if I'm gonna walk it. It's about an hour's walk from here, maybe 50 minutes. I doubt if Mel will want to walk. She's over there having to sit down. We may get a taxi. Actually, we don't have to be on board until half past six tonight, so still plenty of time. Anyway, and the sun's come out. Well, not... Well, that's a slight exaggeration. It stopped raining, and it's quite warm. And here's a real-life survivor from the Titanic. The unsinkable Melissa Williams. My skin looks all wrinkled. Water Are we going to walk back? We're going with the taxi. So we're back at the ship, and yeah. the taxi from the Titanic Museum was ten pound. Was ten pound. Oh, so so, think it's fair enough. Yeah, considering they were charging ten pounds for that shuttle bus. Yeah. For a little look at shop. Yeah. Farmers hats. They got medium, and they got big bog head hats. You get a Belfast edition of Monopoly. The souvenir prices in the port aren't too bad. At least t-shirts are 20 pound. Yeah. Although the fridge magnets are five pound. Five pound fridge magnets. Ooh. I would say most That's things aren't expensive. that expensive, but the t-shirts are 20 pound. Five pound fridge magnets. Those are fancy ones though. We haven't bought one yet, anything yet. Well, where do we get one? Look, Belfast. Well, the Titanic Museum on it. That's the only thing we saw, though. Well, you get one. <laughs> OK, what do I get? So where are we going next? Back on the ship. Yeah. It's our last port of call tomorrow. Oh, yes, it is. It's Dunleary in Ireland. Mm -hmm. Will we make it this time? I hope so. A couple of weeks ago, we were on an ambassador ship and it was too choppy for the tenders. Will we make it ashore this time? I don't know. I don't know if we've got time to go to Dublin, have we? I know, the thing is, tenders are really slow. They have open tenders, they say, four hours after the first one. Okay. So we'll get a ticket, and maybe we'll get a board sooner. So we may not have enough time for Dublin, but we will have definitely have time for Dunleary. Fingers crossed. We'll <laughs> see you there. Well, hello and welcome. We've made it to Dunleary Island. We're here two weeks ago on our cruise on the Ambassador Ambition. And if you haven't seen that, have a look at the link below. And the tenders had problems. It was a bit choppy. And they stopped the tenders early and we never made it to Ireland. But today, as you can see, it's nice and calm. So we should be going ashore quite early. We we're quite low down in the queue, but they started tendering really early this morning. So it's still only 20 to nine. They've called up up to numbers 12 and we're 19. So we should be going ashore in the next half an hour to an hour. We'll see you over there. Well, this time we've made it. Yeah, and it's a sunny day. We're actually in Ireland. In Dunleary. The, the tender. Well, it was quite early, wasn't it? And we got on board, no, we're quarter past ten. Okay. So it was about 20 minutes, wasn't it? Yeah, the actual distance from the ship, yeah. Um, basically, 
it was very calm. If it wasn't calm, I wouldn't go on it, personally. I'm, in some ways, I'm glad they cancelled it last time. Yeah, because it would have been really rough. It was a bit bouncy at the end. And we were taking travel tablets. We didn't feel ill or anything, but it was mm. super calm today. Yeah. So I wouldn't, do, I wouldn't do it if it was rough. No. And then you've got to go back as well. But anyway, so, anyway, if you wanted to get the train, it's literally five well less walk. than five minutes from where yeah. the tender is there. People say it was a 20-minute walk, but it's not. It's just there. Yeah. That's the main train station. So from where we docked, it's five-minute yeah. walk. Yeah. So if you wanted to go into Dublin, apparently it's quite cheap and quite quick. It's something like two or three euros and... Like it only takes 15, 20 minutes to get in. But Marcus doesn't want to go to Dublin because he's not in a very good mood today, Marcus. I am. I'm always in a good mood. Stop making mood. out to people I'm in a bad mood. Anyway, he's in a bad mood. Let's, let's have a look around. <laughs> he wants to go out to Dunleary, but we may have a chance to go there later. We'll see. And look at this weather. This is the best weather we've had since yeah. Akurari. We had a nice cup of coffee overlooking the sea, didn't we? Yeah. And the weather's really nice today, making up for all the rain we've had. And we're in the People's Park. Yeah, the People's Park. A nice little park in Dunleary, which is left from the, from the tender area along the seafront by the West Pier. So we have decided to stay in Dunleary this afternoon. Yeah. We have been to Dublin a few times, so obviously if you haven't been to Dublin before, go to Dublin. But if we just want to relax, and the weather's so good, we'll stay local. So, shall we make our way up into the high street now? Okay. It looks a nice little town, but there again, when the sun's out, everywhere looks better, doesn't it? But it does look a nice little town so far. And there's the barbers, Paddy the Turk. Paddy the Turk. Mel, they do have a maritime museum. Do they? I could go do that on my own, you maybe. Can definitely do it on your own. <laughs> well, I may do that, and Mel can go wander off and do something. Like go and have a few pints of Guinness. <laughs> oh, anyway, it says the art of coffee is a well to do area. Is coffee an art, Marcus? No. We're quite surprised how pretty the town is, Dunleary. And this weather does help. Anyway, Mel's gone shopping. And I'm going to make a short trip to the National Maritime Museum. I think it's about five minutes away. I'll see you there. So there's the Maritime Museum. It looks like it's in an old church. Open daily. 11 to 5, that's 8 euros. This mine hasn't gone off yet. They go and give it a bang. Well, that was a quick look around the Maritime Museum. It's quite interesting. Definitely worth visiting if you're in Dunleary. But now I'm going to meet Mel to find out what she's been up to. As you may be wondering, why aren't we trying Guinness? <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> Even in Ireland, I don't like it. They like the whiskey, but not the Guinness. So I found Mel. Hello, Mel. How was your day? You went shopping? Yeah. Where's that? Primark? Penny's. 
pennies I think it's basically pre mark yeah. I don't normally like to go in pre mark I must admit. But I did buy some. So I think we're going to head back to the boat now, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. I maybe... bought you a bottle of wine. Oh, thank you. Yeah, You've a, been pleasant, told a pleasant morning. Take in... the wine on. Hmm? Dunleary, wasn't it? Let's go back. Yeah, yeah. But it's not too busy. Well, hopefully it won't be too busy. Weather was really good. The first proper day of warmth and sun. <laughs> and the last but one day. Yep. And now we're taking the tender back to the ship. It's around lunchtime, isn't it? Good idea, really, because the yeah. king of the tenders, no one's here. No but uh, it's quite a journey, 20 minutes. Yeah. And I would recommend definitely taking a travel tablet, because these little tenders are really bumpy. And the sea state today, is relatively calm. So we're waiting now to get in. Yeah. I think this tender's already At the moment, uh, all the berths on the ship are, are taken up. So we're just bobbing around. So if you are prone to motion sickness, it's not the best place to be. whatsoever. Oh, look at the right. I've got one of those um, pods okay. there. Yeah. Uh, may it do in a minute. Okay. Mel's just arrived after she's been to the buffet. <laughs> I may try the hot tub instead. It may be a, a warmer option. Now I'm in the hot tub, which is uh, much warmer. <laughs> it's really nice, actually. As we mentioned when we were in Dunleary, this is our last port. Sea day tomorrow before arriving at Dover early Friday. And the wonderful drive back on a Friday as well. Oh God. We had a very pleasant last day of the cruise. If you're wondering where Mel is, by the way, she's in the cabin packing the bags. It's that time again. So walking down to the front of the ship, which is nice and quiet, to quickly chat about a cruise, our first cruise with Carnival. So at the moment, we're heading up the English Channel towards Dover. It's our last night of the cruise. We should be docking in Dover early tomorrow morning for 5 a.m. So getting back to Carnival Cruises, how was our first Carnival Cruise? Well, we both enjoyed it. It was very different to the cruises we've been on, very different to P&O and its Ambassador, MSC, and also Princess, even though Princess had a lot of Americans on it. It was very different. 
this was good fun. As you probably noticed, there were a lot of Americans on board. Nearly all the guests were from America. And that made it a unique experience for us. <laughs> and the ship itself, it's an older ship. So there was plenty of space. So that was good. Even though it got busy in certain parts. Well, the buffet, it was not as bad as any other buffet we've been to. We could always get a seat. So I think it may be down to it being an older ship and older ships had more space per passenger than the newer ships. So if you're a carnival regular and you do go on carnival, I may have mentioned it before, let me know. Is it because it's an older ship and new carnival ships, they do cram you in? Or, I don't know, let me know. Anyway, the food, the food was good. The main buffet, oh, sorry, the main dining room was good. We had some of the best meals there. It was a bit hit and miss on certain nights. But generally, it was good for a main dining room. And it's the casual dining we mentioned was good. Uh, the burritos, the burger bar, the pizza, and things like that. But the buffet, at first, we thought was good. And we thought the breakfast was good. But some days, it was, act it was like they were recycling the food. Like the potatoes were a bit, I don't know. I'm sure they've been in the oven a few times and are warmed up somehow and the bacon some mornings they didn't have the normal streaky bacon they had like like ham and the beans started off being nice normal beans british beans but they turned into sludgy sort of i don't know no one was eating the beans so the buffet itself was hit and miss not a great selection some of it we enjoyed like we, when we first got on we did enjoy it but then it got a bit repetitive but the facilities the shows there's no big show that you get on piano or, or ambassador it was mainly down to the the staff the cruise director who was really good jake and a lot of comedy shows they were good obviously we couldn't film any of those but the co comedians were good on board and it, overall we enjoyed it so i'm not going to ramble on too much we would book another carnival cruise again, depending on the itinerary, and we would like to book one out of the USA. So maybe, I know in Galveston, that's, they've got a base there, as well as on the East Coast. So Galveston maybe, with all the, all the Texans cruising the Gulf of Mexico, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I'm rambling, and it, it's that time, half past five. I think it's time for my last cocktail in the tequila bar. So until next time, goodbye.